Hello, this is Vahid Razavi with BizCloud. I'm here with Anthony Escafragnano, the Senior Vice President of Insight and Data at Dun & Bradstreet. Anthony, thank you so much for your time today. We're at the big data event, and I just had one question for you. Is privacy an illusion? Well, that's a pretty big one question. Um, I think privacy is a changing definition in this world. So, obviously, there is lots of data. With lots of data, there's a little bit of anonymity, right? You can hide in a much bigger crowd much more easily than you can hide in an almost empty room. But at the same time, everybody knows everything anywhere about anybody. So the question is, can they put it together and actually make sense out of it? So I think that's a very long way of saying yes and no. I see. Well, in that case, I've got to have a follow-up question. Um, so in regards to the latest revelations around Snowden and NSA, it's what's taking place with our data. A lot of that data actually resides not just with the NSA, but with system integrators and IT providers at, that work for government contractors. What is the role of regulation and oversight when it comes to enterprise uh, management of data? Unfortunately, the evolution of regulation and oversight is always going to lag the actual creation of data and the data science. And if you look at the history of informatics and you look at the way laws have evolved, the laws have always kind of reacted to what's available. So you're always going to have data that no one ever conceived about, technologies that no one ever thought would be possible, and then the regulation kind of comes after that. Once in a while, we get in front of it with certain types of regulation, and usually what happens there is the regulation needs to get modified because the data doesn't actually play out the way we expect it. So in general, what's gonna, what you're going to see happening is the legislation will lag the data, and there'll be these pockets of opportunity that, that pop up. And what you're describing is one of those pockets of opportunity. So, Anthony, one question that I have that I'm always uh, wondering about is the role of regulation in places like the EU. Uh, on one hand, you have Germany that's very concerned about the, the privacy of its data, and then in the UK, it's a little slightly different. I was wondering if you could describe what these differences are uh, from a European perspective, and then further down to Brazil and how they're viewing privacy and data uh, of users. Sure, that's a great question. So the, you, you think about the European community as a, as a collection of countries, but those countries also have their own sort of sort of local dominance in terms of their laws and their their federal identity. And what you see playing out in places like that is this the set of laws that, that govern the, the space in general and crossing borders within that space, goods and services, but also data moving in and out. And then you have the, the, the private pockets of opportunity that exist in one place or another. So a place like Germany, very, very concerned about personal identity and the laws reflect that. The EU has um, other countries in it. You mentioned the United Kingdom. In the United Kingdom, you have registry, which is very, very public and, and very available for many companies that choose to register or that are required to register. So the laws are going to be necessarily different depending on the infrastructure for collecting data, the way taxation occurs, the way that the, the people in that country generally see their privacy, and you're going to see that reflected. In South America, you have a very different situation because you have data that's changing at a very high rate and businesses that are sort of reacting to that change in the data. And the law is reacting to the changes in the business that are reacting to the changes in the data. So there's this sort of mutual effect, this second and third order effects going on. So it's a little more chaotic. Well, government being chaotic uh, is nothing new, I guess, in that regard. We've, they've stayed consistent. But um, in regards to the data sets that are being made available in places like Brazil, in the UK, are those data sets of commercially available different? Yeah, they're definitely very different. And if I can expand your question to the rest of the world, you can go to some parts of the world and you can find a set of data and go to another set of data and sort of see the, the DNA of one data set in another data set and you know that one was informed by the other, and they may or may not even be aware of that. So there's this sort of viral nature of data, especially data about publicly available things. You know, if you look at news, you look at the second sourcing of news, right? So there were 14 people killed in this fire. There were 14 people killed in this fire. There were 1,400 people killed in this fire. One of those three pieces of information is wrong, right? And we tend to think the two that got it the same are the ones that are right. Well, maybe the other one's newer, right? So it's not always easy to figure out what's right and what's wrong just by watching the data kind of coalesce from one source to another. Well, it's an incredible to have you here at Data Week, uh, a true thought leader in the big data space, and it was a real pleasure. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure speaking with you.